Imagine it's a cold winter morning. You get into your car, turn on the heater, and within a few minutes, you start feeling warm and comfortable. Have you ever wondered how your car transforms the icy cold air into a warm breeze? Let's get into the mechanics of how car heaters work, including the nuances of both traditional internal combustion engine cars and modern electric vehicles. Before we jump into the heating aspect, let's briefly discuss the HVAC system of a car. The HVAC system stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Whether for heating or cooling, the system functions as part of the HVAC. It comprises several components like the blower motor, evaporator, and heater core. First, let's discuss how heating works in a traditional car with an internal combustion engine. When the engine runs, it burns fuel in the engine's combustion chambers. It generates a significant amount of heat due to combustion. A cooling system is required to maintain the engine's optimum temperature. So the engine block and cylinder head are surrounded by a network of channels called coolant jackets. The coolant, which is a mixture of water and antifreeze, the water pump pushes the coolant through the engine's cooling passages. The water pump is the heart of the cooling system. It is typically driven by the engine's crankshaft via a belt. Responsible for circulating coolant through the engine and the radiator. As the coolant flows through the engine block and cylinder head, it absorbs heat generated during combustion. And this is a thermostat valve. The thermostat is a temperature-sensitive valve located between the engine and the radiator. It remains closed when the engine is cold, allowing the coolant to circulate only within the engine and heater core. Once the engine reaches a specific operating temperature, usually around 90 degrees Celsius, the thermostat opens, allowing hot coolant to flow to the radiator for cooling. So this maintains the optimum temperature for the engine to run. The heater core is a small radiator-like component located inside the dashboard. When the cabin heating system is turned on, a portion of the hot coolant that flows from the engine is diverted to the heater core. The coolant flows through the heater core's narrow tubes, and as it passes through, the heat is transferred from the coolant to the surrounding air. A blower fan then pushes air over the heater core's hot fins. This warm air is directed through the ventilation system and into the vehicle's cabin, providing heat to the occupants. The direction, flow rate, and temperature are adjustable via the climate control settings on the dashboard. When the user sets the climate control to a warm temperature, the blend door opens to allow air to pass over the heater core. Conversely, for cold air, the blend door moves to direct air over the evaporator, which has been cooled by the refrigerant. After the coolant passes through the heater core and releases its heat, it continues to circulate back to the engine. This process is a continuous cycle as long as the engine is running. The heating system in ICE vehicles is generally efficient since it utilizes waste heat from the engine. Okay, let us come to the electric vehicle. Electric vehicles don't have a traditional engine, so how do they provide heat? Here's where things get interesting. EVs use various heating technologies to manage cabin temperatures efficiently. Some of the most commonly used systems are positive temperature coefficient heaters and heat pump systems with Tesla's Octavalve technology. The PTC heaters use a resistive method. The heater is made of materials like nichrome that have a relatively constant resistance across a range of temperatures. When electrical current flows through these materials, they resist the current flow, causing electrical energy to be converted into heat. PTC materials have a positive temperature coefficient of resistance, meaning their resistance increases as the temperature increases. This stops the current flow and maintains the temperature. After the desired temperature is reached, the current flow stops due to the resistive nature of the material and maintains the temperature and saves the battery range. In HVAC systems, the PTC heater is positioned in the airflow path. As the fan blows air over the heater's elements, the heated air is circulated into the vehicle's cabin. And it has some drawbacks too. In cold climates, a PTC heater may initially draw around 3 kilowatts to 5 kilowatts of power to heat the cabin quickly and reduce to around 1 kilowatt to 2 kilowatts once the desired temperature is reached and maintain this can significantly reduce the driving range. For example, 
If an EV has a range of 250 miles, using the PTC heater could reduce the range by 25 to 75 miles, about 10 to 30 percent. So how to reduce this energy consumption? Some modern EVs use heat pumps instead of PTC heaters for improved efficiency. We will see how it works. A heat pump is a more efficient way to heat and cool the cabin. It works similarly to a reverse air conditioner. In simple terms, a heat pump can transfer heat from outside air to the inside of the car, even in cold conditions. Even in very cold condition, the atmosphere technically contains heat just above absolute zero, zero Kelvin, or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. However, in practical terms, any temperature above zero Kelvin means there is some thermal energy or heat present. Even at its coldest points, Earth's atmosphere never reaches this absolute zero, so there is always some heat present in the atmosphere. So now, the heat pump practically transfers heat from this colder area into the car cabin. In this setup, as we have seen in the air conditioning system, in cooling mode the condenser is located in front of the vehicle, but this time it works as an evaporator in heating mode, and a small condenser is located inside the cabin's dashboard. The evaporator absorbs heat from the outside air, even when it's cold, turning the refrigerant from a liquid into a gas. This gas flows in a reverse direction to the electric compressor. This gas is then compressed again by the compressor, turning it into a high-pressure, high-temperature gas. And after being compressed, it releases heat in the condenser inside the cabin's HVAC system. The blower motor is strategically located near the condenser inside the cabin's HVAC unit. The blower motor directs the air across the condenser coil, where the hot refrigerant releases heat to the cabin air. The heated air is then blown into the cabin to raise the interior temperature. Wait, now let's step into Tesla's secret, incredible technology, the Octavalve. It's a key part of their heat pump system, smartly managing the flow of heat and cold to make the car more efficient and comfortable. Let's see how this clever setup works. The Octavalve has eight ports that can direct coolant in different directions, allowing it to receive heat generated from multiple thermal components like battery packs, motor drive unit, heat pump, power electronics, and radiator. At the heart of the Octavalve is a rotary valve core. This core is a cylindrical or disc-shaped component that can rotate to align different internal pathways with the external ports. As it rotates, it opens and closes specific ports, allowing coolant to flow between connected components or blocking flow as needed. It works combined with a component called Super Manifold. The Super Manifold has multiple ports that connect different thermal management circuits, allowing it to manage the flow of coolant between components. This system can receive heat from all these different components. This hot refrigerant is released to the condenser inside the HVAC system. As the fan blows air over the heated condenser, the heated air is circulated into the vehicle's cabin. This system enables highly efficient and flexible thermal management, optimizing the use of heat generated by the vehicle's components. The heat pump system and the Octavalve's electronic actuator typically consumes between 1 kilowatt to 2 kilowatts only. What does this mean in practical terms? A heat pump can use as little as 1 to 2 kilowatts of power to provide the same amount of heating that a PTC heater would need 3 to 7 kilowatts to achieve. This efficiency translates directly to less energy consumption and less impact on your driving range. This is why more and more electric vehicles, like Tesla's newer models, are opting for heat pump systems over PTC heaters. So, that's how Tesla's Octavalve and Super Manifold keep everything warm and efficient. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.